Is this okay visually, um, Nick? Well, we're, if you want to bring the camera down a little bit, we're looking at the bottom of your chin. There we go. And our audience okay. is already Okay, it looks with different us. for myself. So welcome, everybody. Okay. I want to welcome everybody to our Legislation 101 session. This is the first one we're doing. This is going to be an introduction to lobbying, which is basically getting your information out to your elected representatives. Um, Mark Finkelstein here is going to be running the show after this introduction. So I hope this will be helpful for most of you, whether you're bird owners or other exotic animal owners or both. So, Mark, I'm going to toss this over to you and go ahead. Okay, um, I'm going to share my screen and I'll get started. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. Um, it's a very important uh, work that we need to do looking forward. And the time to start is now. I'd like to thank Adrian and Nick for helping me get started with this. What I want to do here is give you a basic 101 up outline overview of what lobbying is and what it's all about. And you might say, well, what do I know about lobbying? Uh, just by way of background, I retired from the Navy in 1992 and went to work. Uh, my brother opened a, a burn unit at Staten Island University Hospital. And every year uh, we would have our, the American Burn Association would have a, a meeting in Washington and people from all over the country would go and we would be trained have a whole day of training and then uh, get our leave behinds and go uh, lobby with our representative and legislatures and i did that for uh, 12 years and then i uh, stopped from that job and got into parrots and i've been doing that for since 2004. so what is lobbying i think the basic definition is it's an attempt by individuals or private interest Mark, groups to I, influence yeah, I, yep uh, you want to go up to a uh, slideshow and go ahead and start your slideshow. Okay, give me one second. Uh huh. I got to figure out how to do this. Bear with me. Uh, there you go. Play from start. Okay, there we go. And we're here. So basically, it's lobbying is an attempt to influence decisions of government. And it started and lobbying, the name came from the British Parliament in six, the 1640s, where they were actually in the lobbies of British Parliament and the people were trying to um, influence the decisions that people in Parliament were making. There's three kinds of lobbying. Direct, where you actually go speak to a representative. There's grassroots, where you talk to your friends and have them speak to the representatives. And this, what we're doing here is grassroots lobbying where we're getting the help of all you folks out there to go talk to your representatives about our uh, interests in parrots. And then coalition lobbying where we would join with other groups. And um, for example, let's say we wanted to lobby for um, cages. And, and having cages of a right size. Well, we, th we would just think of it as cages, but there's wire mesh and there's concrete and there's uh, fittings and there's all sorts of other interests. So coalition lobbying would be where we would all get together with all these varying groups and present our case. Lobbying is big business. It's really all about the money. Big Pharma, $350 million a year. Electronics, phone companies, 340 million. Realtors and animal rights organizations. For example, the Humane Society of the United States, it operates no shelters and it's basically a lobbying organization. And they're spending something like over a hundred million dollars a year. Lobbying it's protected under the first amendment of the US constitution. We have the right to petition our government to redress grievances. Okay, who can you lobby? We can lobby the federal government and every state has two senators and depending on your population, you have representatives. Your state has senators and representatives and your local government, maybe a community board, it may be a county uh, governing body. Or like uh, I did 
previous life in the burn unit, we did all three. And, and that's what I would propose that we do here is going forward, we look at how we can um, get out there and, and, and lobby with all of these groups. Okay, so what is the threat? What are we, what are we concerned about? Well, the animal rights ex extremists are lobbying to pass legislation that makes it more and more difficult to keep animals. The Animal Welfare Act and the Lacey Act amendments threaten our ability to keep parrots and exotic animals, transport them and care for them. For example, if you lived in Quincy, Illinois and your veterinarian were in Missouri, right across the Mississippi River, you could not take your parrot to the veterinarian because it would be crossing state lines. So how do we start? Okay, so maybe you, you, you think what I said was interesting and you'd like to get started, but you don't know how to start. Well, the first thing that you have to do, and you need a pencil and a piece of paper, and you sit down and you can go house.gov and senate.gov and look up your representatives. And it's really easy, you click on it and it comes up, put in your zip code perhaps, or your city and state, and you will get your senators and your representatives. All right, now, now that you found them, it's more it's important to get to know them. Lobbying is really about people. Lobby is about getting to know people. And how do you do that? Well, meetings, community board meetings, uh, council board meetings, all kinds of meetings all the time with government and legislators. Write thank yous. If your legislator or senator or representative did something in a committee or in the news that was positive for us as parrot people, write a thank you note. Now, one of the things that might strike you as, as odd would be meet with aides. Now, if you call a congressman and go to their office, you may meet with a 20 year old intern. And that's why it's important for us to have hand a leave behind sheets, but meet with them, become their resource. Donate to campaign efforts, $5, $10. It doesn't have to be a lot. And another thing that's important is identify any committees they're on. If, for example, we're interested in animal rights and, and those committees, uh, it's important to identify which one of our elected representatives are involved with those committees. We want to meet with them and inform them of, of the facts behind keeping parrots. We want to become a trusted source of information of the facts. For example, if a question comes up or a bill is presented and a congressman wants to know what the background information is, he will go to an, a, a legislative assistant, an aide, and ask for help. Hey, could you please go find out a little bit about this and what's going on? Well, if the only people they know to call are PETA people and animal rights people, we will not have a word. But if we are known as trusted sources of information, we will be another voice in the research process for this bill. We want to become the source of information in our area. It's important to inform our friends and encourage them to tell their representatives. Again, this is the grassroots approach where we get as many people involved as possible. For example, here's a, a slide. It's a little bit small and hard to see, but the bottom line is it lists the committees. And you can see that in Texas, and I'm looking at that specifically, the standing committees, and, and I'll get close here and look, is there's a Natural Resources and Economic Development Committee as one. And we'd wanna know who's on that committee because if our representative is on that committee, I think it's important for us to get to know them and let them know we are a source of information and we have contacts and other um, data that would be helpful for them and, as they do their job on the committee. The mindset for lobbying, I think this is really important. Lobbying is about people and making good relations. We're passionate about our parrots and we wanna make the strongest case possible. It's important that we're professional, that we're unemotional and we're factual. We wanna give our information in a clear and concise manner. And I mean, you can go on and on and on and on about how wonderful parrots are and what, what, how, how personal they are and this, that, but the facts are what's really important. What laws affects your, your animals? Well, there's federal laws, bills, Congress, there's rules, Animal Plant Health Inspection Service and the US Fish and Wildlife Service has 
rules that affect how we handle our, our birds. State bills and state agencies have rules and local ordinances. Okay, what does it take to be a good lobbyist? You need determination. We, you have to, we all have to decide, hey, we're going to do something about this. We have to be dedicated. This is not a one-shot thing. I mean, you can't listen to me talk here for another 20, 30 minutes and say, gee, that was nice, walk out of here and, and, and have it happen. No, it takes constant dedication, knowledge. We need to read the laws. We need to understand what's going on. And then it just takes patience. We just need to keep doing this over and over and over. Words have power. Use, use our words. All right. So how do we do this? What do we, what do we actually do? We call up our congressperson. We've identified who they are. And we could say something like this. Hi, my name is Mark. I'm in congressperson so-and-so's district, and I'd like to stop by for a quick visit. When would be convenient? And you can do that when they're in Congress in Washington, if you go to DC, or you can do it locally because they uh, want to see people who, the, who are in their districts. And they'll tell you, okay, here's your time, and come on, come on down and meet, meet the congressperson. You wanna be on time. You wanna be well-dressed. You wanna have a leave behind, and you wanna be polite. They're people, and this is all about people relationships. Leave behind, we'll talk about that a little later. Um, I think Adrian has something or we're working on something that uh, will be helpful for you. You don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know where you're going to meet. You could be in a coffee room. I actually met with a, a legislative assistant in um, Charlie Rangel's office in Washington, DC, and we were sitting in a coffee room on a garbage can turned upside down and in walks Charlie Rangel. And we had a long conversation about burn units and so forth and so on. So you just never know, but it's your part, you're there and you're, being, you're working with the congressman. You wanna tell them who you are. What organization do you re represent? And I like bluff, the bottom line up front. Why are you here? And we're concerned about, and then whatever our le legislative agenda is that we're concerned about. So you have a meeting with the legislative assistant or the congressperson or both, and you say you're going to do a few things for them or look something up or something is left hanging. Make sure you complete your promises. If you tell them you're going to do something, do it. They have memories. And then once you do it, periodically check in a month to, hey, I, I wanted to check back and see how it's going and see if you have any questions. And one thing that's not up here, but if anything exciting, a, 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 a um, festival, uh, something important that's happening, an opening in, in, in a sanctuary or with parrots in your area, invite them. Uh, legislators are always looking for news opportunities. There's some documents available for download. Here's the uh, QRZ code that gives, um, there's some interesting documents in reading about lobbying. And I guess any questions, but before we get to questions, um, I guess to encapsulate this, it's lobbying is a people thing where you go and find out who your legislators are and you meet with them and you present in an unemotional and factual way your case. So I'm not sure how this works, but if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask. Feel free Is there to use a way the I chat. It doesn't, look, it doesn't look like there's any questions from our audience. Um, basically, the most important thing that we can take home from this presentation is that we need to make contact with our legislators and get to know them and have us be the contact point when any animal related legislation comes up. Right now, the only people talking to our legislators for the most part are the animal rights groups. HSUS has representatives in just about every legislator's office in just about every state. And they're out there shaking hands and handing out information, their information, so our point is we absolutely have to start getting out there. You don't have to travel to your state capitol. Your legislators have office hours in your district during the year. So when you can go to their websites, 
Just type in their name once you've located them online and find out when they're going to be in town and set up an appointment. Bring cookies, bring treats. Um, make sure you have all your paperwork with you. You should bring newspaper doc, newspaper documents, news items, uh, wow. factual information. If you're a bird person, bring copies of the watchbird with you. Hand those out. Um, make sure that you follow up with emails or or phone calls, so that they know that you are interested in what they're doing. Yeah, I, you know, what I would add to that, when, when you set up your first meeting, again, you realize you're going in cold and they see a lot of people every day. Um, and you might want to might want to go in a little bit soft and say, well, you know, I'm here. I wanted to meet with you. My interest area is parrots and um, I'm ready to talk to you about that and go from there. Um, they might be awfully busy the first time you meet them and then you may have to set up something for the second time around. But again, persistence counts. I, you, know, you never know what they have on the schedule for that day. But I do know that when Congress people are in, in the, the district, when they're home, they're always looking for opportunities to get good press. And anything, if anytime you have something good going on, it's worthwhile inviting them. Okay, we have a comment from Tom Marshall, who is one of our American Federation of Aviculture representatives. And um, his comment is, we want to see that we, if we can get the American Federation of Aviculture members to start rallying our exotic bird owners and getting people to start visiting their legislators. Um, we should be using the political process just as much as the animal rights people do. They have about a 25 to 30 year head start on us. So we have some catching up to do. We want to protect <laughs> aviculture. We want to protect pet bird ownership from, from, you know, your little canary in your, in your living room to your flock of cockatoos in an aviary. Um, contributions to legislators help too. When you see they're having an event, go down there, make a contribution to their campaigns that they're running. Let them you know, get to know you. I, you know, and I think if everybody's afraid of this, they're Congress people or whatever, they're people just like we are. And they have a lot of different interests. I mean, if you if you think about anything, there's there's always pros and cons, and there's I mean, there's a hundred pieces to every every piece of legislation that they have to deal with. And so I think it's really important that we get our voice heard. If our voice isn't heard, we're just, we just won't, nothing will happen. And then, and then we'll sit here and call each other up and, and complain, my God, see what they did to us. Well, if we don't speak up and be heard, then it, it, it's really on us. So I think Tom is, is right. And how do we motivate people? And I, I think, you know, the takeaway from this is tomorrow morning, call up, a representative or a state representative or a local representative take that with you and just say hi my name is i'm in the congressperson's district and i'd like to stop by and have a quick chat that's it i mean it really is that easy but the hard part is actually doing it we have another question here let them know you have to be present and speak to be seen absolutely the, the point is, if, if they don't hear from us, if they don't know who we are, we will, our voice won't be heard. So, I mean, shake your head up and down and say, yes, tomorrow I'm going to go out there and, and, and actually reach out and touch somebody. And, you know, shake your head nice and, you know, you can right after this close down and, and see who, who's your representative, who looks safe, and let's go do it. Let's start. Nick, are there any questions or comments from the Facebook Live side? I've been moving them over for you. There's one, George Bosco said, are there any substantive bills or issues I can talk about? Um, the Lacey Act, for one. Um, I'd let, let uh, Adrian talk to that a little bit. She's much more knowledgeable than I am. Um, the uh, Animal Welfare Act, there's one that's just become active that, and I, I actually did the test, I, if I was a sanctuary, I'd have to get a class C license um, and whatever forms and, and pay $120 a year and go through all sorts of paperwork just to let people see parrots in my uh, sanctuary. So there's a couple of things. Uh, I think our leave behind box, leave behind 
uh, pa paperwork will give you some uh, uh, some talking points. Okay, how do we get the word out to other people? Meetings, uh, Facebook, Instagram, social media, I would say is probably one of the easiest, cheapest ways to get the word out. I am not a good social media person, but if you, if you, you know, if you post, post things and, and, and post your legislative thing, podcast, if somebody has the energy and time to do that, um, just any medium you can think of to get the word out to your friends, to uh, uh, fellow bird holders, to breeders, to sanctuaries, uh, food stores, toy makers, cage makers, um, the list is is quite comprehensive of people that are will benefit from us being able to keep parrots. We're going to be adding more documents to the flipping book link. Um, some information that you can share with friends and with businesses. Your avian vet is a good source to take these inf this information to. Um, talk to people. Uh, I can't tell you guys how many times I've come across someone and I've been out at a grocery store buying stuff for my birds and we start talking or I wear my American Federation of Aviculture shirt and I have a pin that says my bird votes and it starts the conversation. And then we get people asking questions and I hand them a card and I hand them information with links to AFA and say, hey, join AFA. Uh, we'll give you the information. Um. So it's really important that you just start making contact, spread the word. My tagline lately has been stand up, step up, speak up. And that's how we got to do it. We have to start catching up. We have to start talking, not just to legislators, but to other animal owners. And it's not just birds. It's the reptile people who have been hit really hard in the past eight months. Um, exotic mammals are starting to get hit hard. Uh, one zoo has already begun eliminating all of its venomous reptiles from its collection. So they don't have to deal with a lot of the regulations that are coming at them. So this is serious stuff. This isn't just, you know, your pet canary in a cage. This is a lot of serious stuff. And there is a long game that the animal rights people have been playing for about 30 years. And they didn't just come out and say, we're going to ban all animals, all pets. They started slowly, little bits at a time, incrementalism. They start with a small restriction here and a ban there, and soon it grows, and it goes city by city, county by county, state by state. And now they're starting to look at some federal bans. And once this stuff starts hitting the legislators, they start seeing a lot of it, they're going to start acting on it. So it's about, it's our business now to start stepping up. Zeb um, asked a, a question here, efforts that are ineffective or potentially dangerous. Well, I don't know anything about internet signatures, but what I do know is when you when you speak with legislators, two things that I think are crucial. One is be honest, and two is follow up so that you become become a, a well-trusted, reliable source. Because if, if, if you get a reputation as somebody who talks a good game but doesn't produce, that spreads. And then, you know, oh, yeah, those parrot people, yeah, they, they said this, but they never did that. And so I think just being honest and, and doing what you say you're going to do, it, and it's real simple, I think that's really the, the things that could be ineffective and dangerous. We have had legislators tell us when we went to see them that they, heart, they rarely, if ever, hear from our side. The only people they're hearing from is the animal rights people. HSUS is talking to them all the time. We're not, and that's where we're failing right now. We have to get on this and start talking to these people um, internet signatures generally don't do anything they're kind of feel good stuff makes you feel good to send a big list of signatures um, i don't know anybody that has told me that these have had an effect anywhere uh, positive or negative so i i you know you can do it if you want but i don't think it's that effective you know, and and I, 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 yeah, I think what's what's key here is is that if something comes up about parrots in, m in one of my legislators' offices, they call me. They know who to call. If some um, if something comes up in Adrian's sphere of influence, they call her. And so that's what's important that uh, that you become a voice in your area with your legislators that you speak 
two parrots you, you and you're knowledgeable you're timely you're unemotional you're you're there you're you know you're there when they need you to answer questions form letters uh chris brought up form letters legislators do not like form letters when they start getting a big pile of the exact same letter with just a different name on it a form letter they basically put them in a pile and they just count them as one letter. They don't count them as a stack of letters. So those really don't work. If, if we're handing out information and saying, here's what we need you to write, we will give you, um, we will give you um, some talking points and then we would like you to arrange those in your own words. So we'll give you the framework to build on, kind of like a house. We'll give you the framework and you put the walls and win walls up and windows in. And, and again, it's you call up their office, which you found because you looked online. And if, if, if going to the Senate scares you or in a representative on the federal level, look at a state or local level and call their office up and say, hi, I'm in so-and-so's district and I would like to come by and meet the congressperson. And that's really all you have to say. And it's, you know, it's like a sure thing. It's like, um, you, they can't say no because meeting their constituents is what Congress people do. So it's kind of like a, you can't lose. And then you show up and say, hi, I am, my name is, and I'm interested in parrots and want you to know this, that, and the other thing. And here's my number there. And you've, you've started the relationship. It's all about relationships. It's all about building personal relationships with legislators and what are their needs? You know, they need information. They want to be reelected. They want, they want to, donations. they want donations. I mean, you know, and so they want good press, you know, so providing resources for them puts you in, in a very good position. You, you become a, a, an asset to them. You're not a liability. And the net and the, and the long game for us as parrot people is, we will be able to fight these restrictive rules that at some point will make it impossible for us to keep parrots. Another important option that you have is to join forces with other large organizations who are doing lobbying and are successful. Uh, USR, United States Association of Reptile Keepers, uh, Cavalry Group. They are both fairly large organizations. Um, they have they help exotic animal owners. Cavalry Group helps pretty much anybody. You have to be a member to get help from them. But Cavalry Group, uh, U.S. ARC, join with them. Get a membership with them. Just become a, you don't have to be an active member. You don't have to own reptiles to be a member of U.S. ARC. But you can help support their efforts. And they have people keeping a close eye on upcoming legislation. If you want to know how your individual legislators are voting on animal-related bills and regulations, look at the uh, Humane Society Legislative Fund uh, scorecard, and you can find that one online, and I have to find a link for that for, in a minute. Uh, it's HSLF Legislative Scorecard, and they will tell you which legislators have voted, uh, voted, helped out with, written, uh, co-sponsored or sponsored animal rights re legislation and those who have opposed it. Um, luckily, most of my Arkansas representatives are opposing it. Uh, we have one individual who is working on some things right now that will help animal owners in the state and hopefully federally eventually. So get to know what your legislators are doing. And while I hate giving HSUS any kind of hits on their websites, this is a valuable website. So we and we can also take pages from their book. Look at what well, look at the way they're doing legislation. Look at the way they're lobbying legislators and use that information. There's no reason we can't use their information. There's there's another an example here. Um, it comes from Squawk Chris Quaker G to host. Uh, Marco Rubio is proposed the Lacey amendments. He wrote a letter. The response he got back didn't address what I wrote to them about which tells me the people in that office have no clue what is going on. So I guess this is New Jersey, is Rubio, New Jersey? Florida. Um, that, Florida. Florida. Is it, and if anybody's here from Florida, if you're, if you're here from Florida, there you go. That is something to do and to call up Rubio's office and say, hi, my name is, I am a, rep, a constituent of Marco Rubio and I've seen what he's done and talked about in the Lacey Amendment and wanted to 
come in and share some of my views. And so if you're from Florida, that you haven't, you know, there's your assignment. And that would be really helpful because the Lacey Amendment could create some real problems for parrot keepers. There's actually two versions of the Lacey Act amendments floating around right now. Uh, both both legislators are in Florida. One is Marco Rubio, and I can't remember the other legislator's name right now. And um, we also have uh, we also have HSUS is writing a bill that will prohibit animal movement across state lines. So we have to start keeping an eye out for what they're doing. Uh, the Lacey Act amendments came up last year in the middle of a massive bill, a 3,000 page bill, and they stuck the Lacey Act amendments right smack in the middle of that. And unfortunately, uh, fortunately for us, USR caught that before it got very far and alerted everybody, and it finally got pulled. But that was a near miss. If that bill had been voted on, that Lacey Act amendments would be active right now. So we need to be very careful about upcoming bills, not necessarily animal-related bills. Start keeping an eye on what your legislators are up to. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Okay, I have, I'm going to see if I can't get my screen share working. There's something I wanted you guys to see. Uh, Kim... Okay, Chris says, uh, the three sponsors of the U.S. House Lacey Act amendments are all from Florida. So Florida people, you need to step up, start seeing what your legislators are doing, uh, start calling their offices, uh, just say no, and tell them that you do not, uh, you don't like, thank you, Jenny. Um, a lot of times people ask me why we think this is so important. Why do we care so much? What is it about birds that makes them Thank you, Abbott. Appreciate it. Abbott is really good at keeping on top of this. He's in Virginia, and he's been ex him, Abbott and Buddy Waski have been extremely helpful following legislation. So, if you guys want to copy that that name down and the bill number, uh, start start chatting with her. They can't um, so see it. You'll have asking... to read it. Okay, <laughs> Representative Luna Anna Paulina. She's she's a Republican, Florida, District 13, I guess. And HR 4922 is the bill number, the proposed bill number. HR 4922. So once you while you guys are writing or or taking a picture of that, we have people ask us all the time, so who cares? You know, they're just they're just birds. Why is it so important that we protect them? And let's see, if this doesn't work, Nick, will you help me out? I'm trying to get, uh, I want to get this one screen share up if it works. I don't, go away. There it is. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. Nope, that's not it. Here it is. So there's a slideshow that I did. So why is this important to me? Our legislators will say this. Friends will say that. People will say that. What? You'll want to go to slideshow and start. Slideshow. Uh, let's see. Start from this slide. There it is. Can you see it now? Yes. Yep. Okay. Let's see if I can make it run. You're going to see a black screen for a minute. This is why it's important. That one disappeared. There we go. Kids and birds. We need more like that. We need to start introducing our youth to aviculture.
you're going to start seeing a lot of cockatoos on this because just because I have a lot of pictures of cockatoos and some big macaws. But um, <laughs> this is uh, this is one of Sarah Brad's birds. Cute. This is uh, I think this is Kingo. He's in a sanctuary. Hairdressers. What what I think you'll notice is that when, when you see these people in their birds, they're happy. There's smiles. There's some emotion here. And it doesn't matter how small or how big the birds are. People are happy with their birds. The birds, as far as I can tell, are happy. It's not always parrots either. Some guy says, oh, you're just parrots. You don't do anything with parrots. Well, that's an unparrot. This guy's helping uh, build some toys. Another unparrot. And another not parrot. Some thoughts going back and forth here. It's helping with the dishes over there. Not all parrots are perfect, just like us. Quality control officer right here. Babies, babies, and babies. And, and that's why it's important. There's a connection between our birds and ourselves that, that we need to keep active and keep moving. We need to keep our birds. Um, if some of these bills go through, it's pretty much done. Our birds won't be able to stay with us anymore. Any other comments, questions, thoughts? Let's see, keep talking. <laughs> um, and um, if there's no more questions, I have one more slideshow I would like to show you. It's short. Oh, here we go. Tom says, it would be helpful to know what committees in Congress and in state legislators are assigned bills affecting agriculture and the committee members' names. So if one of these individuals have you as a constituent, you can zero on this, folks, before any... I can't see the rest of that. Um, uh, before any, uh, before any, I guess before any bills go through, um, usually they go to an agriculture committee or uh, or a natural resources committee. You really have to look at your legislators' um, websites and see if they're assigned to any committees. Um, Okay, here's another another comment. Uh, representatives from Florida sponsoring the bill. That's the Lacey Act amendments. Mrs. Luna for herself, Mr. Bilirakis, Mr. Donalds, Mr. Neas, Mr. Carl, Mr. Dunn of Florida. Introduced the following bill, which is referred to the Committee on the Judiciary, which is interesting to me. And in addition to the Committee on Natural Resources for a period to be subsequently determined by the Speaker, in each case for consideration of such provisions as fall within the jurisdiction of the committee concerned and somewhere in South Florida. So there's there is a thing there's where this bill has been moved around from place to place to place. Uh, George says, all I can see about the Lacey Act is Rubio's reintroduction of Lacey Act Amendment to restrict. It doesn't just restrict importation of invasive species. It restricts interstate movement of non-native species of exotics. So as Mark said earlier, if I live in Arkansas and I have a specialty exotic vet in Missouri, I can't take my bird there. I can't cross state lines with that bird. And another another thing is uh, it, 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 you, there's been many cases where a sanctuary has closed down or something, you know, a, a confiscation has happened and we ha have a 12, 15, 20 parrots that need to be moved to shelter, well, you can't move them. 
Yeah, this will affect everybody. Rescue sanctuaries, uh, pet owners. If you're in the military and you get transferred from California to New Jersey, you can't take your exotic pets with you unless you're on a so far non-existent so-called white list. And it's going to take them years to get just birds onto the white list. So how do you tell your kid that his his favorite pet bird or pet lizard or whatever the animal happens to be can't go with you if you get transferred or if you have to move for work? This is going to affect a lot of people. It's going to affect businesses, uh, which is basically the goal. Uh, state Janice asks, what can we do about state's wildlife department rules that are established without public input? input? Uh, we usually don't find out about these until they are in place. Um, those can be difficult. You need to see what your local um, state. Um, um, well, the standing committees, you might, what you might want to look at is every state ha has a Senate and a House of Representatives, and they have standing committees. I showed the one from Texas. And, and you want to look at your state standing committees and, and look at the one that does agriculture or animals or, you know, depends on how they organize it and see see who's on it. And if one of your representatives is on it, there's a good starting place. If they're not, um, you just may want to reach out as a constituent uh, in in the uh, in the state and say, hey, uh, you know, I, I'm seeing this this bill being proposed, and I, I just wanted to talk to you about it. We also want to look at our local city council meetings and board of supervisors meetings. A lot of these bills, statewide and citywide, get started there. We had one in California years and years ago when they started banning legal retail sales of pets at pet stores. They went to a committee that had nothing to do with the economy or animals or businesses. They went to public safety and something else committee and then finally went to the city council who talked about it for three meetings and then decided they had better things to do and they passed it just because they could. So sometimes you have to look locally to see what's going on. Any others? Yeah, there's a difference between laws and regulations. Regulations affect just a small amount of people, usually locally. Regulation uh, Laws are basically generic for everybody. You can Somebody often sign up to be notified when bills are come in. There are on some, there's a website where you can go and you can put tags on. So when animal related legislation comes up, it'll notify you. Denise asked a question about economic impact. Well, if you if you think about what it takes to build a cage to keep a parrot, um, the toys, the food, the electricity, the steel, the bolts, the concrete, the person, the water, the heat. If you if you look at all those things, you can very quickly see that if we didn't have those parrots and we didn't have those cages and didn't have that situation, there'd be a, a loss of a lot of different businesses would lose economically. Now, I don't know how you break that down into numbers, but it's not just, the, you know, it's just not, I can't have my parrot. It's well, who buys the food and the water and the electricity and making and making the, the cage and so forth and so on. So they have a big economic impact. I'm not sure if you can put a number on it exactly, but uh, it's it's more complex than just a parrot. Okay, I think we unless there's more questions, two new messages. Someone says, "When I moved, I just moved. I didn't have to tell anyone. So what's the problem?" Well, if they start prohibiting movement of exotic animals from state to state. If, if you should get stopped for something or if they start checking, they can confiscate your animals um, if this goes through. We have the same problem in California. If you're going into California from another state, they ask you if you have any you know, plants or animals with you. Um, I went and did a presentation in Nevada. When I came back, I had to stop and show them the cockatoo in the cage in the back seat. So they could prove that it wasn't a Quaker or a chicken or something coming into the state. So they will ask. And if there's a regulation that prohibits movement of animals, they may they may just start checking when you go state to state to state. 
Yeah, so uh, um, Chris says we need to know those numbers. Money talks with businesses and legislators getting donations. Legislators care about money. They care about money coming into and going out of their communities. So if you can make an impact, if you can say, hey, you know, if we pass this, our our state or our city is going to be losing a lot of money. People are going to start looking at you and going, hey, this is your fault. Or if we pass this, this is going to bring a lot of money into the state. It's going to be a lot of businesses and people are going to be happy. So we want to make it relevant to our legislators as well. Okay, we're coming up on eight o'clock. Can I share the screen again, Nick, here for a minute? Sure, go Don't ahead. Have to do anything. Okay. Okay, and slide two. Did that work? Okay, that didn't work. Um, let me try that again. Can you see that? Yes, we can see that. Great, great. I couldn't. I had stuff over it. Okay, there's a couple of QR codes here. Uh, one is the for the flipping book, which has some documents in it, and we will be adding documents to that over the next few days or so. Uh, there's another QR code for the AFA membership page. Uh, if you are an AFA member, you can start help. We can help you and you can help us follow uh, legislation and other things going on in the animal and bird world. And I'd also like to mention we have an upcoming conference. This is our um, 49th, con 49th conference. Next year is our 50th anniversary, so keep an eye out for that one. And I don't, this was the link that I got, and it doesn't seem to have anything about the conference on it. Anyway, the conference is at the end of September uh, on the 27th through October 8th, 29th. 1st. Huh? 27th to October 1st. There's, a, there's some great field trips at this conference. There's going to be some fantastic speakers. And we'll have more legislation information on the legislation night, which is the night of the 27th. And the other page that I had on here disappeared. It was a thank you page because I would like to thank, first of all, Nick Pendergrass for making this possible to happen. Without Nick, um, none of this would happen. N none of this would have happened today. And I can't stop sharing. There we go. There we go. Without Nick, this wouldn't have happened. We uh, we had a big learning curve. Um, I learned how to do a lot of new things this week. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank Susan Vandenbroek, Vandenbroek for doing all of the links and for putting up with me trying to find things mm -hmm. and adding things to the list. Uh, thank you, Mark, for putting yourself out here to help us out with the legislation information and lobbying information. We are going to be doing part two of the legislation, which will be some more in-depth stuff, uh, how to um, how to write testimony for or against a bill, how to do speaking testimony at a public meeting for or against a bill, and a lot of other information at the conference on our legislation night. So I hope that we'll see all of you guys there. Um, feel free to join AFA and become one of our members to help support the legislation. And we can't do it without you guys. My my parting comments, first off, thank you, uh, Adrian and uh, Nick. I can't say enough. You guys walked me through this computer nightmare and it actually worked. And that's a surprise. And I'm really glad for that. I'd like to thank everybody who's here. And the, the homework assignment, you, you, I, I, the takeaway, to have something to do. Um, and you can grumble and say bad things about me. That's okay. I don't mind. Is when this is over, you, you know, it's not, not too late. Um, take a look at who your representatives are and pick one arbitrarily. The name sounds nice. Uh, they're close. I don't know. Just pick one arbitrarily. And tomorrow morning, nine o'clock, call their office and just say, hi, my name is, I'm in the congressperson's district, I'm a constituent, and I'd like to stop by for a visit. It's that simple. And you can put that in, you know, in your errands, post office, bank, congressman's office, super, supermarket, pick up kids, come home. And then there you're done. You're done. 
please do that. I think that's, you know, we spend an hour talking and everybody shakes their head and says, yeah, good idea. And if we go about our business as usual, nothing will happen. And I think if, you know, how does that go? Um, you know, for evil to prevail, good people just have to do nothing or say nothing. And so if we sit here and say nothing and do nothing, then five, 10 years from now, when we can't keep our parrots, it's on us. And I really wouldn't want to see that. So please, please look up your a representative, make a phone call tomorrow, put that in, you know, 15 minutes. It doesn't take long. That's all I have to say. Okay, we have two questions that popped up in the Q&A. Somebody said, can we get vendors to help with this since it would affect them also? Absolutely. Con you know, talk to the people who sell products that keep our birds going, food and toys and cages and enrichment stuff. Um, you, you know, pet stores, food people. Hey, did you hear what the new law is going to happen coming down the pike here? Oh, I didn't know this, this new Lacey, Laney, you know, whatever Lacey Act's coming down is really going to cause a problem. Call your congresspersons. You know, then you've just done the grassroots part of lobbying. And sometimes the people Pat, trying to get these bill passed will tell you, well, it's not a big deal. It won't cost anything and it's not really going to hurt anybody. But those bad guys over there, well, like the Lacey Act amendments, it's not just about Ill uh, illegally um, trafficked animals coming in or invasive species coming in. It's about your pets, your companion animals, the animals that you love very, very much. Uh, if you want more information, go please go to the AFA website, www.afabirds.org. There's more info there. Uh, we'll be popping more documents into the flipping book uh, this week, probably leading up to the conference as well. Uh, any more questions, comments, thoughts? No, there isn't. Thank you both very much. We really enjoyed tonight. Thank you. And thank you, everybody who showed up to listen and hopefully learn and go stand up, step up, and speak up. Bye, everybody. See you in Dallas. <laughs>